Welcome back to the El Salvador Insiders podcast, your how-to guide on everything moving and living in El Salvador. Before we start, real quick, there is an amazing free guide linked down below for you on the best of the best of El Salvador. These are service providers and businesses that we have used and love over the past two years meant to help you on your journey here to El Salvador. So make sure to grab that link down below. Now onto the show. Welcome back. Today, I am going to be sharing with you a little bit about what I know and what I've experienced from the Salvadoran culture. So obviously, El Salvador is a Latin country. And if you know anything about Latin people, and I can say this because I am Latin myself, there is this level of warmth and this level of friendship and this level of just come here, I want to hug you type of culture, which I feel like if I'm comparing to Brazil, for example, I feel like El Salvador it is way more friendly than Brazil. It is way more like, come here, let me help you, right? Like in Brazil, like depends where in Brazil, because Brazil is a huge country, right? But depending on where you go in Brazil, people are just like in a hurry, they have things to do, like they're busy, right? And I feel like here in El Salvador, people are, I call this the Salvadoran time zone, like people are just laid back, you know, they're calmer, they're chiller. It's just like, it's a different pace. People here are very nice. People here are very kind. And this is a new thing that my husband and I started doing, but we're like currently judging cultures based on our experience with anything from the government, you know? So for example, in the United States, if you have to go into a government building, you can just expect that you're not going to be treated with respect. You're going to be treated like a criminal. Like, doesn't matter what you do. Like, you're trying to renew your driver's license and people just treat you badly. I've actually only had, like, in my years living in Florida, I've only had one good interaction going to the DMV and people were kind and helpful and I wasn't there for hours and things like that. But, like, for the most part, like, people don't treat you very kindly. And there's just like, I don't know, it just feels strange, right? For my husband, my husband is Italian, like just dealing with the Italian government and then having to get things and paperwork. It's it's just like, I don't know, people just want to shame you and put you down. It's like, I'm asking for a copy of my birth certificate. Like, what do we do? You know, whereas here in El Salvador, but people are just like, you go to a governmental building and people are kind. And like the first time it happened, it was like, oh, what's happening here? And you may think that I speak Spanish because I'm from Brazil and my Spanish is okay. I, I can definitely get by, but not by any means. Like I don't consider my Spanish any good. And my husband, he speaks Italian and, and we try, we do the best that we can. But people are just nice and helpful. And it's crazy, you know, where one time, and this was like the first time that we ever went to a supermarket here in El Salvador. In Florida, we go to the supermarket, you put in all your fruits and veggies in the basket, and then you take it to the cashier. And there's a scale built in, in most supermarkets anyway. And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to weigh your things before you take to the checkout. They do it at the checkout for you because it's built in at, at the cash register. Obviously, when we came here, it's not something that you think about, right? Because we were used to something different. So we went to pay for our groceries and like all of our fruits and veggies were like not even in bags. And the lady looked at it. She was like, oh, you guys, oh, all right. This is not weighted or whatever. So she grabbed everything and she went back to the produce area, which was like across the store. She weighed everything and came back. Meanwhile, there was a line behind us and nobody complained, like nobody was upset. Whereas like if this had happened, I don't know. If, have you ever been shopping in Germany? Like if, imagine that happening in Germany. Like, you would have been, like, thrown out of the store. So just, like, the experience is different. And, and people are just, like, kind. And for the most part, I would say that people are unbothered. Like, unless you're driving here, and we'll talk about driving later on, I feel like when Salvadorans are driving, that's really the only time where, like, they have a personality change. But other than that, people are just kind and calm and they want to help you and they'll go out of their way to be helpful like really out of their way you know so in general that is our experience now with that being said Salvadorans are and this you are going to experience this as as a foreigner because you are a foreigner and you may not understand the culture really well and they want to help you they will kind of like embrace you kind of like a mother hen embraces her chicks 
So it can feel overwhelming sometimes. It can feel like, oh my gosh, like what is happening here? But they're not doing it to overwhelm you. They're not doing it because they're trying to be nosy. They're really just trying to help you because they want to make sure that you are making like wise decisions, right? Because at the end of the day, while Salvadorans in general are very nice people and they're very kind people, there are bad apples, right? My husband and I have been in situations where we have been scammed out of money and things like that and things like that happen so it's unless you're like completely totally ingrained into the, into the culture like there are things that maybe you don't realize so that's why salvadorans like you will make a group of salvadoran friends that will be very protective of you and again like me coming from a latin culture even for me being from brazil it sometimes feels overwhelming but it's not bad i don't want that to be like a turn off but definitely for coming from like a culture that is more individualistic like if we're talking like an american culture or even like german where we're like you know it's me myself and i it might feel a little bit overwhelming when everybody's trying to help you and everybody's like checking in on you and things like that but it comes from a place of love and really just try to be helpful so just keep that in mind when you're coming here because, you know, it's a different dynamic. It's obviously a different country and people just like, they like the togetherness. They, they, they want to know that you are okay and that you are taken care of. By the way, if you're looking for a community of like-minded people, whether you're moving to El Salvador or you're already here in El Salvador, we have a group over on Telegram and a group over on Facebook where you can come hang out with other like-minded people and ask her your questions. All the info will be linked for you down below in the show notes. Now, let's talk about the Salvadoran time zone. It's a thing, okay? Here, here is the thing. It'll happen more often than not that you will make an appointment with, you know, the person to come change out your water filter or maybe the person who's going to come clean your AC or whatever. You make an appointment with somebody. Maybe it's a delivery for furniture, okay? And you're like, okay, Tuesday at noon. And then it's like Tuesday at one and the person is like, oh, I'm not going to make it. And it's like, oh, what happened? Like, why couldn't you have told me at like 11.30 or 10? And by the way, this has even happened with lawyers before. So get used to it. Like, it's honestly, I wish I didn't have to tell you that, but it does happen where people will make an appointment with you and it'll be past the appointment time. And then you get a phone call say, hey, I'm not going to make it, which it never ceases to be frustrating. It's it's actually like now my husband and I just have learned to anticipate it that if so-and-so makes an appointment, they're probably not going to show up or they're going to be late, you know? So kind of plan for that. It happens. I wish it was different, but they are in a, in a different time zone and things are generally just okay. With that being said, I also want to point out that traffic can be really bad here. So there's a lot of constructions and like new highways being built. But even with that happening, of course, with construction going on, like things are slowed down. So things are still moving super slow. So people get stuck in traffic a lot. So if you have an appointment to go somewhere and you want to be on time, just make sure that you are taking traffic into consideration. Because even if you look on the map and you're like, oh, it'll take me 10 minutes to get there. By the time you get in the car, it's like a five minute difference. And like traffic just like sprouted out of the ground, you know. So just to keep those things in mind that just learn to expect people to be late or or like stand you up. You know, unfortunately, it's a thing. And finally, speaking of traffic, let's talk about traffic. Listen, traffic here is bad. It just is what it is. Traffic here is bad, at least right now. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that it'll get better in the future. Okay. But right now, there are too many cars on the streets and walkability is not really a thing here. Like, whereas people do walk, I wouldn't feel safe walking here just because cars are just like boom, 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 boom. And pedestrians do not have the right of way here like we do in the United States, for example. So with that in mind, I don't know what happens when Salvadoran steps like behind the wheel. In general, they're not in traffic like honking their horn or like being crazy and angry and mad. But like they will cut you off. They will just kind of like make a turn out of the blue. And driving here is hectic. It's stressful. So just be ready for that. because. Something changes 
when some of the organs are in traffic. And like I said, traffic is bad. So you're going to be stuck in traffic a lot. So just kind of learn to kind of deal with it. My recommendation is if you're moving here, even if you're traveling, consider hiring a driver, somebody who actually knows the way and like knows how to get places. They can deal with all the craziness because my husband learned to drive in Italy. He was born and raised in Rome and traffic here is worse than Rome. So just to kind of give you a comparison of like the level of craziness here like you have heard about how it kind of dry this is like on another level and i have heard from people who have driven in like crazy countries and and like where our countries are in the traffic's crazy and they're so like no like El Salvador is like the worst you know so just something for you to keep in mind because yes it's rare that there's like road rage and people screaming and yelling and honking at you but it's like the out of nowhere people making a turn and like just cutting you and things like that like it does happen it's super stressful another thing too and I feel like this is starting to get better. Definitely from the time that I moved here is that there are so many stray dogs and cats and you are going to see a lot of dogs crossing the street. And like I said, that then I feel like it's happening less and less. But something for you to keep in mind is that, you know, what you don't want is to be driving and like, maybe driving a little bit too fast and like a dog comes and you run over a dog and it's like so ordeal, you know? So just be aware, just be mindful. And if it were up to me, like I would drive a little bit slower, a little bit calmer, but you know, it's not my country. It's not my rule. So it is what it is. By the way, if you wanted to book a call with me or with Francesco, all information will be linked for you down below on how you can go ahead and do that. We would love to help you on your journey here to El Salvador. Alrighty, in the next episode, I am going to be talking to you about housing and I'm going to share my experience with you of finding a house, whether you want to buy or rent. I am going to try to be as helpful as possible. Until next time, may you find God's love, peace, mercy, and grace, and I'll see you then. Bye.